Good afternoon. This is Wayne Viner, Bruce Posner. We have some special guests. We are in the team house here with lacrosse. Bruce, do the introductions. Hey, yeah, this is a good day for us because most of the time we do the Connor Kellys of the world and the Rotances and the Rambos and Hecox. But today we get to the backbone of the team and the backbone of the University of Maryland for years and years and years. And that, of course, is the defense this year led by number 41, Bryce Young, and his running mate, number 40, 42, Curtis Corley. All right? Got that yes, right. we got it. It's a we mouthful. It. It's definitely a right, mouthful. Right, right. Young so, and Corley? And from what I just heard, you guys were competitors in high school, huh, Bryce? Uh, yeah, we were uh, we were high school rivals. So went to, uh, Did you, like, hate each other? Or you yeah. didn't know each other? Yeah, I, I hated him. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know him. Right. It was probably better than I didn't know him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know our high school has had a, a long time rivalry, and uh, you know, uh, you know, one year we got the best of him. Yeah, my uh, another year, uh, you know, he got the best of us. Which was the year they carried Curtis out on a stretcher? Oh, well, that was his freshman year. Uh, my sophomore year, <laughs> we. We yeah. kind of just embarrassed them. Yeah, they, got, was, they got they got us good there. there. Yeah. They got us good. So that was at Shawnee River, or at Shawnee. Uh, just Shawnee High School. Yeah. And I played at uh, St. Augustine Prep in uh, South Jersey, yeah. Now, when you guys were being recruited by uh, Coach Tillman, did he actually come to any of the high school games, or it was a more summer kind of stuff? Well, for me, I, I got recruited by uh, Coach uh, Kevin Warren, who's now at Georgetown. Uh, tough guy. Tough guy. I loved him. I loved everything you know he, he was about and what he sold me on the program. Um, and then, unfortunately, the day I committed – was the was the day he uh, was he took the job at Georgetown, and I was like, oh wow. Did that shake you up? It was kind of it was kind of upsetting because he was like the main guy I talked to, but then you know, I kind of I kind of got to talk and learn more about you know the program with Coach Tillman and you know who Coach Tillman was and what kind of a coach he was and you know it was it was it wasn't a hard choice at all. I still wanted to go to Maryland and, and be here and be a Terp. And Curtis, what your recruitment? Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> mine was a little bit weirder. You know, Bryce said my freshman year I, I got taken out of the game when we played him. I was a, I was a face-off guy back then. And, uh, you know, I sat out my, my freshman and sophomore years due to injuries. Um, and then my junior year, I was lucky to come back, and I was just like, all right, I'll take a poll. And then Coach Tillman saw me in my uh, state championship game that year. And, you know, after that, the rest is history, and this is where I ended up, and I'm thankful for it. We're thankful too. You guys have been. Uh, look at you, this, Bryce. Let's talk about your career first. I mean, to be in the Final Four and hopefully one more time, but that's that's in the future. But a national championship and uh, a national championship loss that we're all still sick about. But yeah. that's the way it goes. Two of them, right? How uh, how much do you appreciate that fact? Where there's guys who never get there. Oh yeah, I mean. I have a brother that plays at you know a Division One university, and, and where does he play? He plays at uh, University of Delaware, and unfortunately, the past couple of years, you know, their team hasn't been, you know, as 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 good uh, as previous years, and um, you know, around this time, he's been finishing up his season, and you know, we're just getting into the grind. So, you know, I'm I, I'm so grateful to be a part of you know three Final Four teams, one championship team, but. You know, coming in as a freshman, you don't know what that's about. You know, you, you come in and you learn the ropes from the older guys. And I was lucky enough to have, you know, great seniors like Charlie Rafa, Eric Barnon, uh, you know, Casey Iketa, who, you know, I looked up to as a mentor. Um, and, you know, even my sophomore year when we made it there, we had Matt Dunn, you know, Greg Danseglio, Brian Cole, you know, just, you know, awesome older, older uh, guys that led the way. And, even last year, our senior classes, you know, everyone knows about our senior class last year and how special they were. So I'm just lucky to be, you know, be, have been a part of those teams with such great leaders that, you know, took us you know, to the promised land last year and, you know, to the Final Four and the, the two previous years.
NPS, Nonprofit Services, has the technology and know-how to achieve your nonprofit goals. We have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on-prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877-797-8776. We're easy to reach and easy to work with. What did you learn from Timmy Muller over, over his days? And You've kind of taken his mantle, and we expect Curtis to take your mantle next year. It's just a natural progression here defensively. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, Timmy did not get recruited to come here until his senior year. I mean, I think he was committed to Marist. Uh, when I was here my freshman year, he started getting some some burn, and you could tell he was just when he got on the field, he was he was just a pissed off animal that you know liked to, to get after people, and and you know I I thought he as I progressed through the program, he became you know such a, a close friend of mine. You know I consider him one of my best friends. You know uh, throughout my three four years here. Um, but you know, I you know he brought it at practice every day. He was a guy that you know worked hard in the weight room, uh, much like Curtis. Um, and he's a guy that you know he he wanted to get better at every aspect of his game. And last year it showed off. He you know he was undoubtedly the best defenseman in the country, and I was lucky enough to play with him. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. So, Curtis, uh, tell us about, you know, what you've learned from Bryce here because you're, you know, a year behind in his footsteps and you've had that same slow progression that you do at Maryland. Uh, yeah, you know, <clears throat> he's definitely helped me along along the way. Um, you know, my freshman year it was a little bumpy road, and you know, he would he would guide me through what I what I needed to do if it was just on the scout team, which is main role I had my freshman year. And then last year, you know, he he took me under his wing, um, just like Tim had him under his wing, um, and he just, he just kind of showed me the way that I need to fill in my role last year. <clears throat> and you know, this year with Bryce being out the first couple games. Um, I had to kind of pick up a little bit of slack there, but now having him back and just it's kind of just been a little bit of an ease because you know he's he's the guy I look up to, um, and I, I'll always look up to because you know he always does the good things, uh, the things right, the little things right all the time. You know, like in the weight room, you know he's always throwing around some weight. <laughs> um, on the field, he's always telling people exactly where they need to go. Um, you know, I just I just look up to him, you know, every day because he's, he's a real good teammate. Wayne. You play the best of the best. I know that you guys are the best, but in your lineups, you're out there all the time, and you are playing the top competition. I looked at the top 20 this week. You've beaten or played, I think, eight of the top 20. How do you guys prepare to catch a guy like a Connor Fields, or if you had to play uh, against some of the guys that were here, like a Rambo? How do you approach that, and how do you physically match up to that quickness? Uh, yeah, I think it starts with uh, Coach Tillman uh, and how he preps us every week. And then, you know, from that, it's our scout guys. Uh, you know, this year, um, you know, we've played a lot of great teams, a lot of great attackmen. Um, and, you know, guys like uh, Christian Zawatsky, um, you know, Russ, Russ Massey, who, who may not get a lot of the, the fame and the spotlight. But, you know, without them, you know, beating us up every week, you know, day in and day out on the scout team, um, we would not be, you know, the team we are, you know, today and the team we're going to progress to be, you know, by the end of the year. Um, so I think it, it starts with them. I know, um, who did we play last week? Ohio State. We played Ohio State. Who was uh, Ohio State? Um, yeah, he, uh, Ross Massey played, you know, Trey LeClaire. And, you know, I, I don't think, um, I don't even think Trey LeClaire was as good as Ross Massey, you know, throughout the week. And, and we could say thing, the same thing for uh, Christian Zawatsky yeah. the week before when we played, you know, Rutgers. Yeah, Jules Hamburg, you know, I, I think I think Z replicated it really well and, you know, did better at times. Um, I think he was really good. So let me rephrase that. How do you work on being six foot whatever, about a couple hundred pounds, and catch up to these little guys? What, what exercise, what are you doing that allows you to physically do this? And you're not doing it for five minutes. You're out there the whole 60. Yeah. Well, I... 
you know, his matchup last week, he, he was on uh, Jasinski, and he's a little, you know, uh, jitterbug out there. He's, you know, very fast, and, and I think Kurt is just a athletic specimen <laughs> uh, who matches well, uh, who matches up, you know, well against, you know, just about any attackman athletically wise or, you know, physicality wise. And, you know, I think that's where he's so vital in our defense. You know, you plug a guy like Curtis in who's a lockdown defender and it gives me more room to, you know, try to make sure everyone else is in, you know, the right spots and, you know, we're organized behind him. Um, but, you know, he, he crushes in the weight room. He, you know, he's pound for pound the strongest guy on our team. It's <laughs> waiting for me to say that, uh, which is true. You know, I got him in the bench press, but it's okay. Yeah, um, not recently. Check the card. And we will do that after this commercial break. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. You mentioned, and everybody does, when we see you, especially we've seen Bryce in the post-game interviews with the coach, and everybody comes out and says thank you to the scout team. This year we saw what I think is a promotion for Anthony DeMeo, who moved for more of a scout, and he actually scored a couple of goals late. Big goals. Game. Big. Right. How does that make you guys feel, and how does that bring the team together? You know, I just <clears> – <throat> I really think that brings the team together because, you know, he, he started last year a lot on scout team. You know, he would give us a lot of good looks – um, you know, it's just the progression of our team. It just, you know, gives those guys, gives the guys that are on scout team, you know, to work for that spot on on that second line or the starting line. Even with Will Snyder, like Will Snyder was a guy last year who was predominantly just all scout team, and now he's our starting midfield guy. You know, he's out there getting a lot of burn. Um, and you already brought up Anthony DeMeo. You know, he's he's scored some really good goals for us this year. Um, and you know, it's just that that strive to you know be the best. Um, just go ahead and out there work your hardest. You know they give us days where, down on defense, they get the best of us. You know our our scout team can can take probably a lot of the teams here. Um, you know in the D1 level, you know I would take our team over anyone um, scout wise. You know they're, they're great. They you know they put in the work day in and day out. They just don't get the recognition that they deserve sometimes. You know sometimes they're just those background guys. But I mean with us it helps us out so much tremendously. You know, we have to learn from our losses, and I'm sure you guys learned a lot from Ohio State, but it, it seems like, I think of this guy, Tuzinski, he did not have a good championship game, and he must have slept on that for about nine months because he came out like a madman, right, and did, you know, mm -hmm. until he calmed down and went back to normal, you know. Uh, you get the best of everybody you play. Anybody who beats you, it's like it makes their year. You made Ohio State your last week, all right, by them beating you. Uh, you love that feeling of being the guy everywhere you go, and you've got the crowds behind you in California everywhere you go, even on the road. How much does that mean to you guys that you're, you're it, you're Syracuse like they used to be right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, from the time we stepped on campus, uh, I learned as a freshman, you know, we're always going to have a target on our back. Um, especially after, you know, what our team did last year. Mm -hmm. um, and even, you know, the previous two years, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I think we've worked hard yeah. enough to, to, you know, be able to say, you know, we're the Super Bowl for most teams. Okay. On their schedule. I don't want to step on your answer, but you got to remember, this is a guy you're sitting next to has been watching this like, like a maniac for like 40 years, long, like twice as long as you've been alive. He's, he's Next time you look at the championship game, as the game ended, there's a guy jumping up down on the sideline, all right? Yeah. It's me yeah. in a red jacket. Yeah. But oh, he is the biggest. He is probably the you know what Maryland, the Maryland alums are yeah, like. Yeah, but when you yeah. say like Syracuse used to be, these guys were in diapers. Yeah. You're talking about yeah, the but game. they know about the they history know, of Syracuse. But uh, right. I don't know anything about Syracuse at all. <laughs> all right, and on that note. You guys took him to sleep. Yeah, but uh, anyway, we, we got a couple of questions because we have to get to the Hopkins week. Then, okay. so you want to go with the the renowned Bruce question? Uh, these are questions we'll, we'll ask both of you. First concert you both went to? Uh, I went to a, a a Big Sean concert when I was in freshman in high school. 
Big Sean? Yeah, Big Sean. What the hell's that? Uh, He's a rapper. A rapper, okay. All right. Uh, you know, seventh grade, I was really rocking the Jonas Brothers. You know, I went to one of their concerts out. And <laughs> the Jonas Brothers? <laughs> okay, that's a good one. We'll, we'll give you an easier one. What's your favorite kind of car? Pick any kind of car, exotic, Maryland-style Jeep. What's your favorite thing? Ford Escape 2001. Red. Well, license plate number? Uh, that's funny. <laughs> I've had over 30 escapes in my life. All right? <laughs> Wrecked the yeah, his, his best friend's the Ford dealer in Baltimore. Okay. <laughs> Yo. yeah. I would say a black Audi. Black Audi? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, let's, the subject at hand right now, of course, is Johns Hopkins. All right? And it's Hopkins week. Uh, it's funny, at the press conference last week, I didn't hear mention of that because there was depressment raining in there, mm -hmm. uh, even from the coach. But what does Hopkins week mean to you? And may I say this? I was sitting next to, I'm sure you know, Ryan Hecock, Collins' brother. Mm -hmm. And before the Hopkins game, he said to me. He said, last year? Last year. Yeah. He said, Bruce, he said, we're going to take them apart today, and it's going to catapult us into a run where we're going to win it all. And what, what does the Hopkins game mean to you, especially this year, your last one? Yeah, I mean. Uh, during the recruiting practice, uh, process, you, you sold this game, and you know, uh, kids commit to these school like uh, Maryland and Hopkins to play in this game and to be in that atmosphere. You know, being, you know, at you know um, Maryland Stadium last year and having 16,000 people there and filling the whole side of the, the stadium was unreal. And then my sophomore year, I was, I was at I mean, his freshman year, we were lucky enough to play at Homewood and you know pack that house and, and get a win there. Um, but you know, you, this is the biggest rivalry in college lacrosse, and you know, I, you know, if you're not excited for this, you know, being on either one of these teams, you're you're dead inside. All right, Curtis. <clears throat> yeah, just to reiterate some of the things that Bryce said. Uh, you know, this is the game that you know, this is definitely we have it circled on our calendar every single year. Um, you know, our alumni have this one circled. You know, it, we could. We could go losing the entire season and beat Hopkins, and the alumni would be like, "Yeah, we had a we had a positive season." I'm not so sure about that. I'm <laughs> not, no, I'm not go that far. I'm going to turn back. I'll use my radio voice, <laughs> yeah, and go back to interviewing you. What does this game mean to you? It's for the Big Ten. All right, I'm going to tell you boys a stat that's going to like flip you out. 1958 or nine, I went to my that's 58. Think about that. My first Hopkins game at Homewood. All right, and back then, I, you know, I wasn't really a Maryland Hopkins fan. I was just a local lacrosse fan, and uh, it's everything, this game. This game, I say it, Paul Rabel once said it to me from Johns Hopkins, that uh, they had won a title and they were, you know, it was middle of the season, they weren't doing too well. And I said, well, how do you view this game? He said, this is the most important game I ever played. And in some respects, you know, certainly this year, it is the biggest game as you go for seeding and you go for everything else. And you might wind up playing them three teams, three, three times rather. And this is one that people just remember. Mm -hmm. You'll remember. You'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a monster, certainly in Baltimore and what in this area. It's mm -hmm. it's beyond. And you'll see when you guys graduate and you come back, you know, that you're you're. The hands will, the hairs will stand on the back of your neck yeah. when you're rooting and watching. I see some of the players from last year screaming and hollering while they're watching games. You're always a Maryland fan, always, and you're always part of the family. Yes. Is that a good description? I cannot top that, gentlemen. Well, Let's I, talk about Hopkins in general, though. Okay. All right. We don't know if Shaq's going to play. All right. And I know you, you're still playing a great team because they've been winning without him per se. Uh, you know, and uh, Kyle Marr and this kid D. Simone, who looks well, like he's really uh, coming on. Uh, Williams, Cole Williams, Cole Williams makes me look small. Right. So that's a big kid. There's a lot of guys. It, it, it's a team. It's not right. like, you know. I think even against Albany, uh, you concentrated on on fields. You did a great job until we start losing all the faceoffs. So you're up eight to three. Hopkins, you can't do that. It's too many guys, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, they have a they have a great program. Uh, they've always had a great program. They've always, you know, attracted a lot of talented offensive players, and you know, nothing's changed. Uh, this, I mean, even you know, talking about Shaq, if he plays or if he doesn't play, uh, you know, we'll have a game plan ready for him. But you know, uh, he is surrounded by great players and great offensive threats, and you know, it's going to be a, a tough game. I mean, I don't know for sure, but my guess is. 
that he'll crawl out there before he won't play. All right, because it's his the Stanwick family. It's the last game ever, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So. I, w- I would tend so, to see that. Were you impressed with the crowd and the intensity and the feel? It's sort of like the Wrigley Field of lacrosse, if you'd want to have one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, my freshman year, that was probably the, the second game I ever really played in because I took a couple face-offs that game. Um, you know, just having all of that all of that crowd behind, you know, it was, it was really cool, and especially last year when, you know, we had them here and it was at 16,000 people, you know, like – that was, you know, what I got sold on to come here. You know, you play for this game or you come here for this game and, you know, you, you just play to beat Hopkins. You know, if you can beat them, you know, everything's going good. Uh, well, we were going to ask you for the complete defensive game plan. Oh, yeah, I right. see we're out of time. Well, listen, <laughs> so, listen <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you guys this, all yeah. right? Coach Petramala will watch this tape just trying to gleam anything out. So well, I'm not we, gonna, we didn't say anything. I'm not going to so. – listen, I'm not going to ask you one question about uh, yeah, game plan. You know, well, these guys got to get to practice, so we probably should wrap this Let's up. Let's wrap this. Hey, guys. Curtis, thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank well, you, all right. man. Thanks. We've been after Bryce, you guys. thanks a lot, man. We've been after you guys to do this Curtis, for about sure you six tell your months. Mom. Tell your mom. And we will see you on the field at Homewood on Saturday. Go Terps. All Good right. Afternoon. Thanks, guys.